Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part 11 of my discovery build. I continue work on the painting and masking of the exterior of the ship, uh, finishing up the spine, uh, mainly the collars for the spine itself with the uh, Aztec dummy masks, which I'll show here in a moment. Uh, and also I completed the aluminum tube connector and got it wired in and painted for the pod. Uh, which I'll show at the end of this video uh, and have that all done as well as some other modifications that I made to the command sphere uh, that I had to finish up first before I would be ready to go ahead and start painting the command sphere. So let me go ahead and show you what I've got accomplished. All right, uh, work continues on the Discovery, painting a little bit of, of detailing in the different colored panels on this ship. Uh, a very, very useful and important tool is a masking set. And this is my favorite one here from Aztec Dummy. I think it's the only one actually that's available. A uh, very comprehensive set, two sheets of instructions, double-sided. You get two sheets of decals that come in it. As I showed in the previous video, I used it to do the little bit of detailing. And as I said, this is still stark. This will all be blended together when it's done. But before I can do a final blending, I have to go through now on the collars and then on the command sphere and do the, um, to do the different panels. And I'm gonna actually have four different grays. So um, I'll show you here in a moment. For right now, I started with dark gray German gray and dark gray are very, very similar in tone. It's very hard to tell much of a difference with them. So I went ahead and got the dark gray. And right now what I'm doing is masking off the panels on these two collars that are gonna stay the dark gray. And those are gonna stay on until the end. And then um, I'm gonna paint it now with another lighter coating of gray, I believe a neutral gray, and I'll show you here in a moment. And then, uh, then we'll do another round of masking. So I decided to do a little bit different thing on this little piece here where I took some of the little parts that came out of these sections that were used to put the details on here. And I just stuck them on here to kind of leave them a darker look. And I'll do the same thing with, um, with the other colors. I'm gonna have four grays all together. So, all right, let me get pull those grays out and I'll show you the ones that I'm gonna be using. All right, so there you go. So I have a dark gray, which is already on there now, which is very similar to German gray, which I used on some other parts. Uh, a neutral gray, which will be the next color to go on. Light gray, which is lighter still. And then sky gray, which is the lightest of all. So it'll give me a nice gradient of grays throughout it. Uh, I may or may not use a fifth one on the command sphere. We'll see what happens when I get to that part. But I'm not painting that just yet with these. That's going to be its own project. Uh, that in the collar that's on the back of the sphere. So, and, and that also being a separate piece that's held on by magnets. There's the two magnets. That can be done as its own thing. And it doesn't have to be done with this now again the blending coat once all of this is done the command sphere the two collars the propulsion unit the spine all of it i will go over it put it together and go over the blending coat in order to bring it all into the same general gray color which is what i'm ending up wanting to have with it so okay so the next thing i want to do now i don't have a lot of these on just a, a little bit because these are the only parts that are going to say the darkest gray. So the next thing we'll do is put on some neutral gray uh, in certain panels, and then we'll mask those off to keep those the neutral gray, and then the next one and the next one and so on. So, okay. 
Okay, uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, and I'm, I'm not going to show going through the process of doing it, but the way that these masks are designed, they're designed very, very well to fit the actual shapes on the ship. So, for example, that back collar there in front of the propulsion unit it has those unique shapes, and you can see them all right there. So there are enough shapes in these sections that you could literally mask off every single panel going around this collar. But you can pick and choose the ones you want. So you have to pick the ones that fit the right angles, the right curves, and match up in this. And it's fairly easy to do. You just kind of use this as your template. So for example, if I pick that one there in the center, then I would skip four panels and do the one there above it and just make sure that I measure it off. And you can see it only fits on one way as well. Uh, and then likewise, for this part here, you have these different shapes that are different lengths, different thicknesses. So you have to pick the right ones that match up with those shapes. And so there are a variety provided in this masking set as you can see right there, there's quite a few. So you're not gonna use all of them. I'm gonna use quite a bit of them because I'm gonna you know, do four different passes, but there's gonna be a lot left. So you have a lot to work with and a lot to be able to mask it off. I'm not trying to go for any kind of screen accuracy because there's just not enough pictures to match it up and it would just be madness anyway. In the end, I just wanna get the, the idea or the impression that there are multiple different colored panels making this up. When you look at it from a distance, you're gonna see like an overall gray appearance of the ship. When you get closer, you're gonna make out individual panels, some of them that are dark, some that are lighter, lighter and lighter and so on. So, okay, all right. All right, so I went over the two collars again with the neutral gray. It's a little lighter than the original dark gray. And I've gone ahead and put on the second layer of masks while leaving the first layer on. It's a little tricky because you have to kind of feel lightly with your finger to tell where the original mask is since it's not painted. Like I can tell right here, this one's raised just a little bit. Some of them like this one here, I can see pretty well since they're odd shapes. All right, so I went over with a second layer on the back collar and also on the front collar. And I'm trying to keep them kind of random. I'm trying to avoid doing like evenly spaced around it so it doesn't look unnatural. And again, like on this one, there's already the the first layer of masks that are on there from the dark gray. So, okay. So now that I have those on, I'm gonna go ahead and put on a coating of the next layer, which is the light gray. And then there'll be one final masking on these collars. And then I'll go over with the sky gray. So ultimately these will have four different colors of gray, four different shades from dark to light. But it still won't be, the sky gray is still not the final gray that I'm going to have over the blending coat. So even that will be lightened up a bit when I'm done. So, okay, but coming along very nicely. All right, so I painted on the, uh, the light gray, and then I did a final round of masks that I showed in the last stills. And then I painted on the final color, which is the sky gray. And you can see now it's lightened it up quite a bit, so it's starting to look a little more homogenous with the rest of the spine. So what I need to do now is go ahead and take off all the masks. I've let this dry for a little bit, a couple hours. Take off all the masks, 
carefully so I don't scratch it. And then I'll show you uh, the, the gradient, the various, not gradient, but the various uh, colored panels of the four grays. Uh, and then um, that'll pretty much complete these for now until I'm ready to start doing an overall blending coat and then bringing them all to a, um, to a general gray look, so, okay. All right, there we go. So I pulled off all the masks. You want to use a really sharp X-Acto knife, a nice fresh blade with a good point on it so you can lightly get underneath it, pry it loose, and then grab onto it maybe with some tweezers or just use the blade to pull it up. And then I just stick them down onto this tape. These are the pieces of tape that I had wrapped around here as well. So, all right, so let me get and show those to you. And again, these are really stark contrasts but that's the idea. It'll all be blended together and then you're just gonna see some, some different colored panels when you look closer at it. And the same with this. Okay, so those turned out really well. I'm really happy with that. So for now, that finishes up the two parts of the spine. Uh, the propulsion unit's pretty much done as well. So uh, the next thing I'll be doing is working on the, um, the command sphere, which is gonna be a little trickier just because of all the curved surfaces and a lot of paneling on that particular one. So, okay, so I will go ahead and start working on that next. All right, so before I can start painting the command sphere, I have to finish getting all the magnets set up the way that they're supposed to be. Now I know in a previous video I showed putting on smaller magnets to hold the um the top of the command sphere onto the back collar so it can be removed and acts as batteries because i'm going to have batteries down in the bottom of the sphere behind the the pod bay that need to be replaced so i wasn't happy with how they were holding they were a little flimsy so i i tore them all back out you can still make out like some of the lines back there where i had them glued in place and I built some sturdier ones using bigger magnets. So I have the ones on the collar done, and then I have it taped onto the sphere, and I'm starting to work on the ones, you can see this one right here, that I have to make some supports coming out onto this uh, in order to finish that up. So So let me show you how I come up with these side pieces to support the magnets on the inside of the, the command sphere. So the first thing I do is I take this piece of styrene sheet and I line it up against this edge right here and I just trace on it to get that curve because you can see how that piece there has to curve and match the inner curve. The rest of it's just straight lines. So this is a straight line, that's a straight line. So once I get that done, I cut out a piece that's roughly the right size and I stick it in here and line it up with this part with the magnet. And then I go ahead and just, again, trace along those edges in order to get those other two sides on it. And then I cut it out and I end up with a template. So this is the first one I made. So then I just take this and I trace it out since both of these are gonna be the same and both of these are gonna be the same. Uh, the one down here is very similar the curve is going to be the same, but it might be a little longer just because of where this one's positioned. But again, I can fiddle with them. So once I make the first one, I just use that to trace out and cut out additional ones, sand them down to where they need to be, and then start gluing them into place with some plastic bondine, which hardens very quickly. Uh, one other thing that I can also do, and I've been doing, is if the outer edge doesn't quite meet, when I glue that in, like you can see on this one right here, it's just a little bit off. So when I glue that top one in, what I'll do is just force this part out to meet it. And then when I glue that onto here, it will hold it in place so it's, it's positioned correctly. And that way I can make some minute adjustments so that this part is on there in the right place. 
Now the bottom of this, because this is the top, the bottom will be glued onto this collar and that'll be permanent. This part will be removable because this part here with the magnet and of course the two supports are just glued onto the command sphere half and not onto the back collar so they can come off. And that way I can access the batteries inside. So, all right. And there are all the finished connectors on the inside and they've dried. And I put some five minute epoxy inside around the connector parts so they're nice and solid. I also took it apart and did some down in those ones on the, on the collar. So now this comes loose. But it's definitely a whole lot stronger than the small ones I had originally. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Sorry. Okay, there you go. All right, so those are on there nice and solid. So once I glue the bottom half onto this collar, this will be arranged like this, and this will be obviously held on by magnets to the spine. And then I'll be able to just attach this on and put it on after I change the magnet or the batteries and that kind of thing. So but very strong, you can see, <laughs> extremely strong. So that's not going anywhere. That's not coming off anytime soon. Okay. One other thing I want to do is um, my client suggested or wants to be able to either put it onto the stands that it comes with or hang it on the wall. So as I did on the propulsion unit, I'm going to put a magnet in the bottom of this sphere that's going to attach onto the standard the stand that comes with it. I already have one on the propulsion unit that um, that attaches that onto it as well. So it gives a little more stability. So, okay. Okay, so as I showed in the previous stills, I went ahead and I attached a magnet, grilled out a hole, and put a magnet in. And then also put a tiny magnet in this one because this is a very small little part right here, but it won't interfere with the stem that it's gonna be sitting on. As far as this part being a stand, if he wants to use that. And then it goes on. It's not, I mean, it moves around a little bit, but it's basically just to kind of keep it where it's supposed to be. Obviously the rest of the model is going to be attached and, um, and then this will be sitting on a post, but it just helps it to, to center it. And that magnet's not going to be in the way of anything going inside as far as the, the pod bay or interior, interior on there. So, okay. All right. So I showed in my previous uh, video before this, uh, building a little teeny pod and I have the pod all built ready to go it's it has to be wired through an aluminum tube and it's going to go into the command sphere on this side here and then come around and have the pod suspended in front of it and this will be painted black of course so he'd want to have a black background like a space background like mine does and then he'll be able to go ahead and just put this in and i'll have other connectors attached onto it i'm thinking of maybe like a three or four pin system that go around and just kind of slide into that so i i drilled a hole and i sanded it smooth that would accommodate this aluminum tube so this just goes right in like that and this will be the permanent one i have to get a tool that lets me bend these tubes without crimping them like that because that'll mess up the wiring i was hoping to try to bend it a little gent more gently and it wouldn't do that but i wasn't able to so okay so this will line up right in the middle of the cockpit window so when you see it from the side I believe this is the starboard side you're just going to see that in front of it and of course then the pod will be this will be attached so it's solid and straight and the pod will be sitting up on top 
facing into here. And if the rest of this is painted black, it should blend in with the background. You're not gonna see it. You're just gonna see the white pod sitting there all lit up with the, with the claws sticking out and little figure of Frank uh, sitting in the claws. So, all right. So I've begun working on the aluminum tube that will support the pod coming out in front of the ship. So that's some light. So I glued on with some five minute epoxy the tube. I ran the wires through it and it comes through this other end. They're all wired into two connectors. Then I'm then gonna connect into this piece right here and this is one half of a of a um, removable connector the other half obviously has the female end that the two pins go into and that's going to be inside the ship and then uh, and then you'll be able to just plug it in and remove it if you want to so right now it's just straight because I've tried a few things unsuccessfully I even got these things from pull this up here KNS Precision Metals. Now they're the ones that make the aluminum tube and the copper tubing. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. They didn't give me too many other directions, but uh, they bend them okay. But then you can't get this off. If you bend it more than say 45 degrees, you're not getting this back off again. And what's the point of doing that? Especially since I want to put 90 degree bends in this. So, so I don't know. I think these are supposed to just curve it or something, but they're not really gonna do what I want them to do. So I decided to go ahead and put the wiring through and then I can just gently bend it and it won't hurt the wire any and it'll just encase it inside because there's plenty of room inside of there. Uh, and just put the, the correct curves. So the way this is gonna go, is this is gonna be in front of the ship facing off and there's gonna be a bend right about here, which is gonna bend it this way. And then a smaller bend that's gonna bend it and go through that little hole that I put in the side of the sphere. And I actually made it larger so it would accommodate this whole connector. Because I can't just put the tube through, it's gotta be able to put this piece through, which is larger, so, so it can be removed. And I'm going to fashion, once I get it bent and put into the right position, I'm going to fashion on another piece over this and put four more pins that are going to go inside and give it some support. So, all right. And one other thing I did was I cut out a little hole in the back collar and I glued in the sensor for the remote control. There's a remote control. There's the little circuit board. So these wires right here go to the LEDs. These wires go to the power supply. And these will all be internal, of course. So this is the bottom of the sphere when it's connected on to the ship. It's a little bit off. Uh, but I figured out when this, when this magnetized part is connected onto that spine part, there's still a little bit of a gap. And this is fine. This picks up the sensor very well. And I tested it and it works just great. So you won't really be able to see it and it'll also be painted. So that's gonna be a nice place to put the remote control sensor, okay?
So as I showed in the previous stills, I went ahead and put some bends into this tube. I also fashioned, try to put this over. I don't have it glued in place yet. I'm getting ready to. But I fashioned, I took some thick styrene sheet. I first just made a square and, and drilled some holes, one in the middle for the tube, four around it for some thinner brass tubes. And I went ahead and got those all glued in place and drilled holes into the side of the, the sphere as well to accommodate them. So this piece can be removed and, and slid back in and have some, some stability. I just marked a little T on there so I knew where the top was. So I cut some thicker aluminum tube that would slide over this piece. Can't really see it in there, but well, you can kind of see it. It's right down over top of that to give it a little more solid um, part to glue on. I did have to bend this part up a bit to try to put it right in the center of where I want it to be. And I can still adjust it later once I get this all glued together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put on some I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to put on some CA glue around this tube on the outside liberally and put some kicker on it to get it to go ahead and, and harden it in place. And once that sets up, then I can go ahead and put some five minute epoxy liberally around this. And again, I'm not that worried about it showing because it's going to be on the other side of the ship where you're not going to see it. Uh, but it's important that I have this position where it needs to be because I can't really adjust it anymore. Well, I can. I can bend this just slightly, but I don't want to be doing too much of it. So I have to make sure that that is positioned just in the right place so that the pod is facing off where I want it to be. And then I'll be ready to, to get that made on more solidly. And once that's done, I just have to wire in the wires and get this painted black, and then this part will be ready to go. And here is the painted and finished pod connected onto the power source that'll go in the side of the ship. I glued on the arms and the little Frank figure. And it's nice that the structure is like this, so it'll be easier to ship like this. I can make sure this is secured down and so that's not touching anything and breaking off because it is kind of delicate. I decided to go with the 3D printed arms, as I said, because they look they look more realistic than the photo etch ones. So, all right, so I got this all painted. I got the little piece wired in to go into the side and plug in the other end. We get that plugged in, and then we'll see how that's going to look on the ship. Okay, and there it is mocked up onto the sphere. Let's have the battery sitting in there. You can see I have the two connectors. And when I hold it up against this space background where I normally have my space clipper, you can see that it kind of blends into the, to the background. So let me get and turn it on and we'll see how that looks. All right, there we go. There's the pod, you can make out the interior, of course the headlights, you can even see the headlights reflecting off of the front of the sphere. And you'll see that even more whenever the, um, the cockpit's in there with the glass and it's painted and everything, so that'll look pretty cool. Just a few little light leak spots I need to fix up, but no big deal. I can do those pretty easily. But looking pretty cool. All right. All right, so a lot of great work done on the Discovery. 
uh, definitely coming along and nearing completion of the ship, which I'm real excited about. So uh, now that I've gotten all of the modifications done and I got the pod ready to go, uh, the interior is already done. I just have to do a little bit of adjustment to, uh, to get that fitted inside of the command sphere. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and paint the, the, the sphere itself with the mask set, uh, which is quite a bit of painting. So I'll be working on that next time. And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and start getting this back, getting this put together. So hopefully one or two more videos and I'll be able to get this wrapped up and complete this build. So uh, very happy about that. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll see the fantastic completion here soon of this, uh, my second build of the Discovery.